All right, time for another episode review of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And I gotta say, this was a pretty good episode. We get the return of Lady Sif, and yeah, let me just say this right now. Um, I'm really glad that they decided not to build up the whole Scott, uh, you know, the whole, uh, ex yeah, Scott, uh, excuse me, Daisy being... Uh, you know, hiding the inhuman thing for another three, four episodes. Because that would have gotten old real fast. Thank God, like, right after the previous episodes, like, oh, now everyone knows who Sky is, uh, like, what Sky is. Or Daisy, or whatever the hell you want to call her. Anyway, so, this episode is more or less about the, the, the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents trying to find, you know, trying to help uh, Lady Sif, who's lost her memory, in tracking a Kree agent who is, who is sent down to, who's come down to Earth to personally destroy uh, Sky. She's come, he's come down, kill her, because the, as, uh, as in the comics, the Kree are responsible for creating the, uh, the Inhumans. And apparently, on Earth, this is where they really got, apparently, according to the Kree soldier, Bintak, the the uh, <laughs> apparently the whole ex the Inhumans were used to be weapons of war, but however they never real they all just eventually died off. But on Earth, their genetics were so well uh, something different happened. The Inhumans here grew and took and created their own city. So I'm kind of thinking, hmm, methinks Black Bolt's on his way. <laughs> Because they said there was a group of Inhumans that revolted against the Kree, created their own society. So we pro so you guys probably know who who he's talking about. The the Inhumans royal family: Black Bolt, Medusa, Crystal, Gorgon, Triton, Karnak, and Lockjaw. Uh, yeah, and Crystal too. I for I forgot to mention Crystal. But yeah, I really do like that. And again, I also... Let's talk about, real quick... Let's talk about what Mac and uh, Mockingbird are up to. What, uh, what those two are up to. They, it is confirmed, yeah, they're not with Hydra. What I kind of figured they probably weren't with Hydra either, so... That's, kinda, that's confirmed. But they are working for somebody. Someone did say that the theory is that maybe they're working for... And I'm inclined to believe this. I'm inclined to believe this one that maybe they're not working for a government agent, maybe they're working for Hill, who's now working for Tony Stark, who probably wants his hands on Fury's toolbox because Tony... <laughs> Tony loves using... It. <laughs> he just loves building new stuff, and if he got a hold of Fury, uh, Fury's toolbox, he could create something a lot... probably a lot worse than Ultron. And I can't wait... And I'm kind of curious to see how the effects of Age of Ultron are going to play into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm really curious to see how that's going to... Because, you know, every movie that happened that has happened so far, they kind of deal with the, uh, with the outcome. Although, Thor the Dark World outcome... Uh, Thor the Dark World's outcome was a little more... Eh. But in Agents of... Obviously, in Winter Soldier, that was a lot different. Uh, but, yeah... Uh, what else was I gonna say? What else did I want to say about this? Uh, I do like again. I do like that they had that they decided not to keep Sky's uh, identity as now an Inhuman a secret for another few episodes. Cause that because that would have gotten old really fast. That would admit it, guys. That would have gotten really old really fast. I mean, seriously, how long could you have kept a girl who whose power is she can you know more or less create earthquakes a secret how how much longer could you have kept that a secret up until you know it would have been eventually found out you can only do that you can only play that up so far so i'm glad the following episode right after you know the fallout of episode 10 they say oh now everyone knows so thank god for that among other things i am i'm also really i also like a big a big shout out to fitz who calls bullshit on everybody Thank God for that. Like, I love how he calls bullshit on everybody on this. Like, when uh, Simmons is talking about, you know, Sky is my friend, I never heard her. And then he's like, oh, really? You let it, um, you would have treated her, treated her differently, like how I was, how you treated me differently after the whole events with what Ward did to me. So, I don't want to hear it from you. So, yeah, everyone's more or less scared of Sky, and she just locks herself in the interrogation room. 
So, in, on the bus, so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Especially with the next episode, which I'll get it, I'll be talking about uh, coming up shortly. So, with that said, among other things with this episode, it, it was cool to see Lady Sif back. It's always cool to see Jamie Alexander play La uh, Lady Sif again. And... Again, it's cool to see, you know, more of, you know, the Kree's involve involvement with the Inhumans involved. It was cool to see that, and how this, sol this soldier, Bintak, went against the Kree rules and just went down to Earth to, uh, to more or less go down there and, and take, take it upon himself, because he said, look, these things are weapons, and if the Kree found out that, you, you know, your, your world had these creatures on there, they would have started these experiments again and tortured millions of other lives. So you can ki I can kind of sympathize with Bintak's reasoning behind wanting to kill Sky because really he had a point of, look, if the Kree found out you, you know, your world had a working group of Inhumans, they would have come down to Earth, ravaged it, and then used them for experiments and then weapons of war, and then started to use the Terrigen Mists on other races again. This is, you know, that's something I can't allow. You know, I can't let the universe uh, fall to our mistakes. I kind of, like, again, I don't really see Bintak as, as a villain here. He was trying to do the right thing in his own way. Granted, it wasn't the right, it wasn't, you know, killing someone wrong, but hey, you can kind of sympathize with what he was trying to do. He also, the actor playing Bintak gives off a, he's more or less blue Drax. That, it, let's face it, he's literally Drax if he was blue. <laughs> yeah, he even sounds like Drax when you think of, the actor who played him, who played Bintak sounds a lot like Dave Bautista as in his Drax uh, voice. That uh, yeah, I just thought of that. I just realized that. Huh? Go figure. Anyway, so not much else I can say about this episode other than it was another good episode. Season two is vastly superior than season one, and uh, what else? Oh yeah, next episode cannot wait because next because uh, uh, next week's episode it's we're getting something that we've been I've been waiting for for a while now. The Masters of Frickin' Evil. I've been waiting for this for like since the show started. And they were introducing all the lesser known villains, so it's cool to see Mister Hyde build all the bring all these villains together, and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> so anyway, you guys tell me, what did you guys think of this episode? Did you guys like it? Did you guys hate it? And what do you guys think for next week? Well, how do you think next week's episode is going to go down with the arrival of the Masters of Evil? Hopefully they'll call them... I want them to call themselves that in the actual episode. Like, uh, Cal's talking with the other vi with the other supervillains, and he's just like, so what do we call ourselves? We get The index is stupid. How about Masters of Evil? <laughs> and the other villains are like, yeah, let's roll up that. <laughs> anyway, once again, hope you all enjoyed this review, and I will see you guys later.